Hey YouTube, this is Austin with AustinThirtyThings.com. Today we'll be talking about how to create an autopilot, at least getting started, in X-Plane using Python. So this is part one of at least three or four. Um, first up here is a screenshot of our Python code running in front of X-Plane. So um, this is the code over here, it's pretty simple. Uh, here's the flight simulator over here, we're just sitting on a runway. Um, and you can see it's spitting out a latitude, a longitude, an elevation, and some control values for the aileron, elevator, and rudder. I'm probably going to pronounce aileron wrong a bunch of times. I grew up saying it wrong, so here we are. Um, anyways, um, I started working on this code a couple days ago. Um, there's another game I was playing, uh, Factoria, which has sucked down a lot of my time. Uh, but I drove in a little car around. It would snap to a heading, um, so made it easy to go straight lines. And I thought, okay, how can I do this in a flight simulator? I recognized uh, a PID controller is what was turning that vehicle, um, and so I wanted to add some of those to Python. So I do have definition of PID controller here, which is what will be basically the center point of all of the control algorithms. Uh, PID stands for proportional integral derivative controller. Um, so these are very, very common in the industrial and control systems world. Um, basically anything that needs to maintain a set point will use some version of a PID. So, you know, that could be ovens, other airplanes, uh, the cruise control in your car, things like that. Um, really, you probably use many of these every day and you don't even realize it. Um, okay, so this post will show how to get X-Plane hooked up to Python, um, and the real program will start with the next post. Uh, video link coming soon. Well, that's what I'm recording right now. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're not going to download and install X-Plane. I already have it installed. Uh, I'm going to leave this up to you. Then we'll download and install the plugin. Verify the plugin is active in X-Plane. Download some sample code and then run it uh, to make sure that the data is being transmitted. Uh, and running it is basically what we looked at up here in this screenshot. All right, so download and install Xplane 10 or 11. Um, Xplane 11, you can click on this link to go to Steam and get it. Um, they work fine on both. I've been using 10 because it loads faster and uh, it's less resource intensive. Uh, even though my computer is very capable, um, can run both without a problem. I just like the faster load times. Um, so. What we'll do next is, assuming you have Xplane 10 or 11 downloaded and installed, um, next up will be downloading and installing NASA's Xplane Connect plugin. Um, so they have a GitHub page here. Um, I guess that's the link to the specific version. This is the GitHub page. Uh, so it is an open source research tool used to interact with the commercial flight simulator software, Xplane. Uh, it allows you to control aircraft and receive information from aircraft and X-Plane in a couple different languages. Uh, test control algorithms, visualize flight paths, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, I don't know how or why NASA got into this. Uh, probably some of these things mentioned here, but um, it seems to be the go-to uh, connection. So, this is what I started using, and this is what we will be using uh, for the rest of this post. Okay, so with this link here, we have the link to all of the releases uh, on this first link and a specific version on this link. Uh, so I am going to download this specific release, 1.3 Release Candidate 6, save file, and then we will open up the zip and place the contents in the explain directory slash resources slash plugins. Uh, Alright, so here's my explain 10 directory. Um, let me grab the file here. All right, we're going to copy this folder. I hit Control Z to put that on my clipboard. Uh, then we're going to go to our Xplane 10 directory slash resources slash plugins. And then I'm going to hit Control V to paste it. All right, so Xplane Connect has been uh, installed. Um, and the screenshot of what your directory should look like is here. Um, I just had it up as well. So next we're going to verify Xplane Connect is active. Um, and so to do that, we need to launch Xplane. Alright, so um, just real quick. I've been using Cirrus The Jet. Um, this is what it was called in this release. Uh, this is the Cirrus SF50. Um, and I just use BJC because that's the closest airport to me. Uh, do day and clear because we're not trying to mess with anything else. 
Okay, so we have XPoint loaded up. Um, this is the screenshot for XPoint 11. For XPoint 10, it's here. We need to go up to the plugins at the top and then just enable slash disable and just make sure this box is checked. And it will be plugins, plugin admin, enable disabled. Okay, XPoint Connect is enabled. All right, so we have verified that it is running. Um, next up, we're going to download some sample code from the same GitHub page. Uh, so from the Python 3 portion, download xpc.py uh, for explain connect and monitor example and stick them in a working directory. Um, doesn't matter where. So I have all of this stuff uh, right here, uh, which I have open in Visual Studio Code. Um, okay, so I guess I should probably open up this folder to show you guys what it looks like. Um, Alright, so here we have the folder of the Python code. Um, what comes with it is basic example, monitor example, playback example, and xpc.py. These are the four files in the GitHub um, Python 3 folder, which you can see here. Uh, so I have those downloaded, and we have monitor example open up, opened in Visual Studio Code right here. Uh, so this is pretty simple. Um, all it's meant to do is demonstrate the very beginning of this program. So with uh, a new instance of Explain Connect um, as client, we're going to do a loop while true, which is always. Uh, so first it's going to assign to this variable posi, uh, which is short for position, the Explain Connect client dot get position. Um, and we're also going to get con some control values with uh, client.getControl. Uh, the definition of a lot of this stuff is on the GitHub page. Some of it is fairly vague, uh, like position. Um, you know, there's like six or seven different uh, elements returned in the array, um, but there's nowhere that clearly defines what they are. Um, so I had to kind of guess on some of them. But anyways, uh, for this loop, we're going to get the position, we're going to get the control values, and then we're going to print out the position and the control values. Um, and so essentially this is just saying location is, uh, and then these blue print, uh, blue percent things are where these values will be inserted. So we're going to do the first three elements of position and, uh, the th second, first and third element of control, uh, which so happens to be these things right here. So it's going to be latitude, longitude, uh, elevation, uh, sorry, altitude, uh, aileron, control position, elevator control position, and then rotor control. Control position. Uh, and this is the, um, you know, we're defining this as a function here, the function called monitor. And then if the name is main, this is basically just saying if this gets called from anywhere else, uh, the name is not main, but if it is main, start running this. Uh, it's just a way to execute these. All right, so with this up and running in the background, um, we are going to start our code. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to hit F5. And you might get, uh, all right, it's going. I don't know why it's not auto scrolling. There we go. All right, so it's going by really fast. So here we have latitude, longitude, elevation, and then these other values. Um, so if I, let's see if this monitor is big enough. Uh, so one thing I have noticed is uh, as you drag the screen around, um, we get a timeout exception, which is pretty annoying. Um, this error is not what you'll see when you do that because I've tried to catch the exception, but it results in an error elsewhere, so um, kind of annoying. But anyways, let's see. I'm just going to shrink this a lot. Let's see. We'll get that out of the way, and then we're going to shrink this. Okay, I guess that's going to be good enough. Sorry, we don't really want to run monitor example, not whatever. It was just up. All right, all right. So in explain, you can. Damn, I did it again. All right, let's stop that uh, one more time. Okay, so um, in explain, you can click the window, and you will be able to control the airlines and elevators, aileron. Uh, so as you can see here, the farther I move to the left, that's uh, left bank. So we go close to negative one. Uh, the, go to the right, airlong is up at one. Close to it, same for elevator, down is 1, uh, pitch up, and then pitch down is negative 1. 
Um, and so I will hold the F2 key to get started. Um, I do have a joystick, but it's put away. Um, and then I will hit B to release the brakes. And so here's the control panel. I'm just scrolling down on that, but uh, basically I'm just going to kind of guide us on the runway using the mouse control because, uh, like I said, my joystick is put away. Um, but this this is fine. So you can see the position. You know, all this data is changing. Um, Bonus points in the comments uh, for first person who tells me where I just took off from. Uh, it's pretty close to my house. Uh, we are, I think I measured once, 0.4 miles off the runway center line here. Alright, so there we go. We are up and running. Uh, I'm using this aircraft because it's got power um, and you know, it just seems reasonable. No, no sense using a 172 for... Uh, you know, waiting for it to climb or descend or, you know, just slower. This is just faster, so that's why I like using it. Alright, so that's that's what we got going on here. Um, positions are changing. We're flying around. We have demonstrated that we have hooked up X-Plane to our Python code. Um, so, let me crash this, and I'm going to use that for a thumbnail, actually. Let's see. Somewhere around here, maybe? Yeah, this will work. Alright, boom, alright, right into that house. And we got a socket timer. So, um, so that's that. Uh, we, back to the post here, um, run the sample code to verify the data is making from x -Plane to our code. So I said, uh, with x -Plane running and playing on the runway, uh, it doesn't have to be on the runway, start the monitor example.py. Um, then you'll see this stuff scrolling by like we saw, and you're up and running. Um, so what I've got going in my autopilot so far is I can do pitch angle hold, uh, roll angle hold. Um, I've tested from negative 25 to 25 on both. Um, I can do altitude hold. Um, really, I can set an altitude and the plane will go to that altitude and hold it. Same with headings, same with airspeed, uh, and I also have navigate directly to a lat launch point. Um, a lot of aircraft GPSs have direct to function, and this is very, very similar to that. Uh, the next post will be controlling the plane using just a basic wing leveler. Um, you know, basically putting the wings level with the horizon. Um, this will be one PID loop, and I think it will be a great place to get started uh, for the next video. So we will basically say the set point for the roll is zero. Uh, adjust the air lines to get there. So that's uh, that's the first post. Um, if you like this video and can't wait for the next one, uh, click like and click subscribe. Um, you know, the more subscribers and likes I get, the more inspired I am to keep putting these out. Um, so hope you learned something. Hope you're excited for the next post. Uh, I definitely am. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.